Hey, welcome into Locked On Big Ten. Coming up on today's show, all Big Ten teams are out, and the one team that has the most work to do if it wants to make the NCAA tournament, the Indiana Hoosiers. We'll talk to Locked On Hoosiers host Jacob Rood about the upcoming matchup with Michigan and how Indiana got itself back on the bubble at the end. That's all coming up here today on Locked On Big Ten. You are Locked On Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome into Locked On Big Ten, everything you need to know about the conference every weekday. I'm Nate Dickinson. Coming up on today's show, Jacob Rood is in of Locked On Hoosiers to give us his breakdown of what Indiana has to do to get into the NCAA tournament. The team that, in my opinion, and you'll hear Jacob's as well, is the last team with the most work to do that still has a shot in this conference. We'll talk about what the Hoosiers can do against Michigan and onward in this Big Ten tournament and what Indiana has done so poorly in the last month or so to put them back in this situation where the NCAA tournament is not a guarantee. But first, though, let's get into the biggest news of the day here in the Big Ten. The All Big Ten teams are out. Now, we've got a big list of names to go through, so I will give you thoughts, but first, let's just get into who won what. Your Big Ten Player of the Year, and deservedly so, is Johnny Davis out of Wisconsin. I I mean, we can talk, of course, all the time about the preseason thoughts on Wisconsin, how Johnny Davis absolutely exploded and drove that team to a share of the Big Ten title. And of course, he earns, again, deservedly so, Big Ten Player of the Year honors in both the coaches and the media polling. The first team along with Davis in the Big Ten is Illinois' Kofi Coburn, Ohio State's EJ Liddell, Iowa's Keegan Murray, and Purdue's Jaden Ivey. I You can't really argue with anyone who's on here right now. We'll get into the second team and third, and you'll hear some other names that you'll think, oh, maybe they could have been on the first team too. But you you can't argue with any of the names that are currently on this first five list. Again, Cobert takes the center spot. Liddell there to Keegan Murray, Jaden Ivey, and Johnny Davis, the top five in the Big Ten, at least according to the voting in both polls. And again, that was exactly the same in both polls too we had both the coaches and the media voting the same way it was not unanimous all around we did have some unanimous selections actually and i'll get to that in a minute but moving on second team trent frazier zach ed hunter dickinson brad davison ron harper jr and trace jackson davis get second team honors there's six players there that's because bryce da- or, uh, uh, brad davison got a second team and a third team uh Award nominee and coaches and media. Third teams, Travion Williams, Alonzo Plummer, Bryce McGowan, Geo Baker, Malachi Branham, and Gabe Brown. And then the defensive teams, defensive player of the year is Caleb McConnell out of Rutgers. And then the first team, all defense, EJ Liddell, Trace Jackson Davis, Eric Hunter Jr., and Trent Frazier along with him. Uh, just a couple of thoughts here. It was Kofi Coburn was a unanimous first team All Big Ten selection. You can't argue that he was the best center in the Big Ten this season. But uh, with players out there like Hunter Dickinson and also Zach Eady, I was a little bit surprised to see him pull away that much in that award and get the unanimous selection there. So, I mean, obviously deserved, and I thought he was the best too, but I thought there would be some other people out there who at least thought a little bit differently or thought somebody else, maybe Edie, would get a couple of first-place votes in there. But, again, Coburn, again, like everybody else, obviously worthy just like everybody else is. Outside of that, I don't have too many complaints really here. Brad Davison hopping up onto that second team maybe is a little bit of a surprise in that one vote. Uh, You have... Again, Ron Harper Jr. there. Hunter Dickinson, Zach Eady, Trent Fraser, Trace Jackson Davis there. Those are guys you can't argue with. Uh, Travion Williams, Alonzo Plummer, Bryce McGowan, Geo Baker, Malcolm. I I don't 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 know why I'm just repeating the names over and over again, but it's not really a list again with so much talent in the Big Ten. You can't, like, if you're going to put someone else on, the the question is and should be, like, okay, who are you going to take off then? Because if you're going to say it's wrong, then something else has to be done to balance things out to make room for your guy. These guys that are on here, it's really, really hard for you to say that anybody's been all that much better than Ron Harper Jr. has been for Rutgers, and even he only got on the second team 
in the in Big Ten voting. So it's a list that's really hard to get on, especially this year. An insane amount of star power on it. And at some point, we'll get to talking a little bit more about it. But first, we've got, of course, the Big Ten tournament coming up. Jacob Rood, the host of Locked On Hoosiers, covers this Indiana team that has the most work to do of any team with a shot at the NCAA tournament still in this Big Ten tournament. Win against Michigan necessary, we agree. But what is Indiana thinking if it gets that what does it need to do more, perhaps? It's a really, really going to be a tight situation on Selection Sunday for the Hoosiers, it looks like. We'll dive into all of the different scenarios with Jacob in just a minute, right here on Locked On Big Ten. Listen, March Madness is great, and of course, everyone loves filling out their brackets, but it's maybe been a while since the last time you actually won a whole lot of money or even close to winning a whole lot of money when you enter into some of those pools. So what are some other ways that you can try to make sure that you can have some fun while also staying profitable during NCAA tournament season? You can do it with Stat Hero's new NCAA Pick'em Contests. The new NCAA Single Game Pick'ems pits the star players against each other in amazing hybrids between fantasy and sports sports betting. Take control back from those handicappers that always seem to have the advantage and start focusing on the players you know best with a gameplay that doesn't rely on any big spreads or long odds or fancy props or anything like that. Again, it's a combination of fantasy and sports betting out there that allows you to be able to have some fun while also doing it while betting on the biggest players in the tournament. You can do it right now at stathero.com slash locked on for a 100% deposit match. That's stathero.com slash locked on and use our promo code locked on for a 100% match. Stathero.com slash locked on promo code locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks again for making Locked On Big Ten your first listen every weekday. Make sure also to check out our Locked On Bracket Breakdown coming March 14th, the Monday after Selection Sunday, right here on the Locked On Big Ten podcast feed and YouTube channel. College basketball experts Chris Gordy, Andy Patton, and betting expert Lee Sterling give you in-depth breakdowns on every matchup. It's again the Locked On Bracket Breakdown. March 14th, you'll be able to find it right here on the Locked On Big Ten feed. Listening into Locked On Big Ten alongside the host of Locked On Hoosiers, Jacob Rude. I'm Nate Dickinson. We're here talking about the bubble. Indiana's right on it as it gets ready for Big Ten tournament play later on this week. We'll talk about a huge matchup with another bubble team in the Michigan Wolverines in just a minute here, Jacob. But first, we got to start with how the Hoosiers got here because for a big part of this season, Indiana was kind of on like, uh, let's say, the Iowa level where they were flirting with the top 25 at times, but there was never any really doubt that this was a safe NCAA tournament team. It wasn't till down the stretch here that Indiana started to slowly climb down or stumble down those NCAA tournament projections. And right now they're right on the edge, depending on who you look at as to where they stand going into tournament play. How did this happen? How did this team that one got off to such a hot start? It wasn't just the predictions and things. This team was playing really well. How did this team end up falling back into a questionable spot as we go into the last week of the regular season? Yeah, I mean, if you look January 29th, IU beat Maryland. Uh, they were about 10 days prior is when they had beaten Purdue. They were 16 and five overall, seven and four in the in the Big Ten, and then went two and seven the rest of the way. Something happens to this team when it when the calendar sw- switches over to February. Uh, it's been a couple years running now. I wish I had the exact stat, but I used something like 10 games under 500 in February and March games over the last five years. Um, it's just something with this program right now that's just this weird little, I don't even know, spell that they're in. Um, part of it was the schedule. I mean, the Big Ten schedule in general is always really tough. Um, they didn't really lose any bad games. There was a game against Northwestern where half the team was suspended uh, and there was a couple injuries and they only had six guys available. They lost that one and they probably should have won that one. But um, that one and maybe the Rutgers game last week were the only two games that were winnable that they didn't win. Um, it mixed in there, Illinois, Michigan State, Wisconsin, Ohio State um, at Purdue. They hung with Purdue. So part of it was the schedule got really tough. And 
as is always the case in the Big Ten. And part of it was just this team has struggled all year. Uh, one of the phrases Mike Woodson's said repeatedly is just learning how to win. And a lot of these games have been close games, uh, single digit, single possession games. And IU just finds different ways each time to to figure out how to lose them. So it's been a really frustrating last almost exactly month of the season for IU because, as you said, we were pretty securely in the tournament and now probably on the outside looking in. Now, I, again, going into the last week here before the NCAA tournament, I hate to go back to it because I'm sure it's still a little bit painful here, but you mentioned you ran with Purdue. I have to say you did a little bit more than that, had a really good shot to win that game at the very end. How much better would you be feeling about things right now if that had gone IU's way and the Hoosiers hadn't let that one slip away? Yeah, I mean, I think if they win either of the that game, obviously, or that Rutgers game a couple days prior, um, they're in the tournament and probably pretty secure. I mean, that Rutgers IU game was kind of a play in type of game. Almost. Um, if you look at where Rutgers in is there, it seems like they're pretty secure, uh, in the tournament now, though they've been on a hot stretch to close the season, uh, even not counting that IU game, but, um, yeah, it, either one of those games and I'm feeling really good, especially that Purdue game, uh, when we were, kind of looking at the end of this regular season and figuring out what games IU was going to have to win. Uh, ev- pretty much everybody considered that Rutgers game a must win because everybody also considered that Purdue game a loss. And so if you're able to steal that one, yeah, IU is securely in. You have, you swept Purdue and they have enough quality wins and really not many bad losses uh, that I think their resume would have looked fine. So that's what was painful is you lose to Rutgers on a, a three-pointer by Ron Harper Jr., as he's done multiple times this year. Um, and then you lose to Purdue on a game you had a really good shot at winning. So five points is what's separating IU from being on the bubble or being securely in the tournament. You mentioned it quickly there before, but you do think that if Selection Sunday were today, IU would be on the outside looking in? That's what it – yeah, that, that's how I feel, that kind of looking around – there aren't many brackets that have IU in the field right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Most of them have IU as the first or second team out though. So, I mean, it's not certainly not out of the realm of possibility uh, depending on how the committee views things versus how bracketologists view things. But right now it seems like IU is like the last, the 70th team or 69th team uh, in the, in the rankings right now, which is, just a really painful place to be. Well, March Madness is here, which means it's almost time to start filling out brackets. And if you're one of the people who actually puts together the big pool, you could be wasting your time by not using runyourpool.com. We've gone over and looked at all the different ways to do this bracket thing. And Run Your Pool is just quite simply the best. They've got not only an easy way for you to just organize your normal bracket pool, but if you're looking to switch it up a little bit or do a little bit more than just the normal thing this year, they've got eliminator style games. They've got survival kind of games. It's all sorts of ways for you to play bracket busting kind of games with your friends, with your coworkers, or anybody really at runyourpool.com. If you're someone, again, just trying to do it for the family, it's nice and simple and easy. If you're trying to get the coworkers involved, you can send it all out to everybody at once. Or if you're running a business, you can get customers involved and get new customers out there too. It's runyourpool.com. Putting out to bracket challenge is one of the best ways to get your name out there if you want to, or to just have fun with friends and family, of course, too. And if you want to play with us, too, for a shot at a cash prize, you can join our game at runyourpool.com slash locked on. While you're there, you can create your own pool for your friends and family. If you do use the product, enter Pure Madness at checkout for $10 off your custom pool. All the rules and details will be available there. That's runyourpool.com slash locked on for your chance to win a cash prize. We look forward to seeing and beating you there. Well, football season might be over, but basketball, of course, is in full steam, as we know, for both pro and college hoops. For all the latest odds, totals, props, and anything else that you could possibly want to bet on, head on over to Bet Online. If you hear a line on a show on a Locked On podcast, it's from Bet Online. If you want to play along with the stuff we talk about here, go over to Bet Online. You can get it done there. 
no problem. And of course, with all the sort of convenience that you won't be able to find anywhere else. The new website they have just looks good. If you've been betting for on sports for a while, the websites don't always look great. And if you head over to Bet Online, you can, of course, as always, bet on anything you like, but also get the information that you need to make the right bets and make sure that you're putting your money where the smart money is going to. So head on over to Bet Online right now and learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. Also, a quick reminder before we get back into things with Jacob, thanks for making Locked On Big Ten your first listen of the day. Be sure to make your second listen Locked On NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL corner Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to you live to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and, of course, available wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, it's tough, of course, and uh, I've talked about it for a while. I, it was since that Rutgers loss that I was just like, okay, IU is the ninth Big Ten team out of nine now. If the committee wants nine in, IU can get in there. But if it's going to be eight, IU is going to be that team that gets left out, at least the way I see it. But there's still plenty of time for the Hoosiers to play their way into this tournament, too. Let's go forward and look at the task at hand here, Jacob. Michigan Wolverines coming up. Here in this Big Ten tournament, of course, playing in Indianapolis, you're going to have the home court advantage of at least some IU fan base there. Let's first look back to the last time you played Michigan, though, because it was ugly at home. What happened in that game, and what are you trying to do so much differently here this time around? What needs to be done so much differently? Yeah, that was probably, over the course of 40 minutes, the worst game. Um, 80 to 62 was the final. Yeah, I just I didn't yeah. even say the final score yet. Yeah, it was bad. Um, part of it, I, I honestly think a big part of it is that that was um, like three days after that Purdue win, which mm-hmm. you have to just get so up for and kind of invest so much emotionally into that game. Uh, and then especially the way Indiana won it. And um, they just seem like a team that was just kind of drained. They win that game on a Thursday night, late Thursday and Sunday I think it was like a noon tip off is the Michigan game. So just a super quick turnaround after that. That being said, that was some of the worst defense IU played all season. Uh, Michigan is not typically a very good three point shooting team and they hit everything because everything was just wide open for them. Um, it was a really bad defensive effort. Michigan shot. I mean, you could say shot unseasonably well, but when they're all kind of wide open three pointers um, there, a lot of them are going to go in. So uh Part of it, like I said, was that coming off that Purdue game, but IU just didn't play well defensively. And this isn't a team that's capable of playing from behind or making big comebacks because offense has always been a struggle this season and they just can't score in bunches. So if they they're if they find themselves down big, it's very, very rare that they're able to make a, a big comeback and get back into a game just because they can't string enough baskets together. They might be able to get the stops, but they can't get enough baskets on the other end. So that's kind of what happened in that Michigan game is they weren't getting stops and they're not going to be able to score with anybody if uh, somebody's scoring at a high level. So um, it was just, like I said, it was one, probably the the worst full 40 minute game the Hoosiers had this season. But I do think a lot of it was self-inflicted, which gives me a little bit of hope for for Thursday's game. What's the mismatch here? What's the thing that you're looking at as, okay, Indiana can do this to be able to take advantage of something that Wolverines just don't have? Well, I mean, defensively, Indiana is going to be able to hang with just about anybody um, in the in the country, really, but certainly the Big Ten. Um, they defend the, the two-pointer really well, and I know that's something that Michigan had success with. Hunter Dickinson really destroyed Indiana in that game. Um, so I know that they're going to be thinking about that, but, um, defensively Michigan's not a great team. So, uh, the Hoosiers have been better of late offensively. A lot of that's been, um, Xavier Johnson playing the best basketball of the season. Some of his best basketball of his career. Uh, he's drugged this IU team to this point, uh, where they are on the bubble and barely or barely outside of the tournament. Um, as much as Trace Jackson Davis has been um, the story of the season and probably the player of the season for the Hoosiers, he was second team all Big Ten today. Um, Xavier Johnson's probably been the best player for Indiana for the better part of the last five, six games. So uh, having a point guard playing as well as he is right now has really 
changed a lot of things for the Hoosiers. That's why they were able to um, hang with Purdue. He had a double double in that game and looked like the best player on the floor for Indiana. Um, so if we're kind of eyeing, so maybe not necessarily a mismatch or, or an area for the Hoosiers. Um, I, I would hope that Michigan doesn't shoot as well from the three point line and the Hoosiers typically defend that well. So that'll be a big thing as well. The IU typically defends inside the paint well, and as well as a three point line, but um, that's kind of strength on strength. That'll be interesting to watch, but defensively Michigan state or Michigan, excuse me, struggles and, the Hoosiers have been better, so that's one area I'm kind of looking at. Jacob Rood here with Locked On Hoosiers joining us on Locked On Big Ten. Jacob, I think we've established that this is definitely a must-win for mm-hmm. IU if they want to have any sort of chance to get into the NCAA tournament. But if they do upset, or I guess not upset, they are the eighth seed, right? Or right, any, it doesn't matter really. Anyway, if they beat Michigan, are they? Safely in, you think? Do you think you need to have at least a good showing then against Illinois in the next game to feel like you're safely in? Do you need to beat Illinois to feel like you're really safely in? Like, where does this win take you as far as you view where the field of 68 is? I'd feel, obviously, I'd feel better with beating Michigan, but... I, hmm, I, I, that answer alone probably mm-hmm. tells you that's probably not enough. Um, it would be really close and it'd be a lot of sweating it out on Sunday. Uh, If IU, as you kind of said, wants to feel really safe, uh, beating Illinois is, is big, but I mean, (laughs) ironically, I use maybe I use worst game was against Michigan. I use worst half was probably the second half against Illinois. So they really put themselves up against it with this draw and how they finished uh, the, the big 10 season. I kind of made the, the joke or the analogy that, this is kind of what you get for messing around at the end of the regular season and going two of seven that um, I thought for a while, it looked like the Hoosiers might play Michigan state and Wisconsin. That's two teams that IU played really well against. They should have beaten Wisconsin at least once this year. And we're with Michigan state that whole time. It, I, I felt really comfortable about that. Michigan and Illinois, um, Indiana is just not really making things easy on, on themselves or their fans this season. So if they do beat Michigan, Ultimately, I think they would be in. Uh, it would be big because Michigan, they're they're in the tournament, but they're not securely in. So kind of a win over a fellow bubble team always seems to have a little bit more weight. Um, and so if they beat Michigan, I ultimately do think they would be in. Again, I'd be sweating a lot on Sunday. If they beat Illinois, then yeah, they're securely in. They're they are fine, and I won't be sweating at all on Sunday. But IU never does that, so I'm not anticipating <laughs> uh, them allowing fans to not sweat on Sunday. Yeah, it wouldn't really be a college basketball season if you weren't sweating your team at least once or twice, but you, you kind of hope it's not right here as you get closer to Selection Sunday. That's where the Hoosiers are at, though. But again, when you're playing in the Big Ten, if you're close, you've, of course, got a good chance to get yourself or at least the opportunity to get yourself safely in that tournament here in the Big Ten tournament. Again, Jacob Rude with us here from Locked on Hoosiers. We may have to get him on here after that game as well to talk more about how the Hoosiers do. But until then, of course, remind everyone where they can get a hold of you and the show yeah we're obviously daily locked on hoosiers uh you can follow us on twitter at lo underscore hoosiers uh we do halftime spaces on twitter as well during uh i use games so hop on in and uh on thursday at halftime of that iu michigan game and we'll have all the coverage of that one Again, Locked On Hoosiers every single weekday, just like we do it here on Locked On at Big Ten. We'll have Jacob back on here again soon. As, of course, Indiana is not going to be off that bubble anytime soon before we get to Selection Sunday. Thanks again, Jacob, for talking to us for a minute. We'll chat again here soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. Looking forward to it.